The year is 2011. The rivalry between Forza Motorsport and Gran Turismo has reached its peak. The Forza series was able to release three games during Gran Turismo's absence, with each improving over the last, proving Forza Motorsport is a serious contender over the simcade racing genre. The streak of near-competition-free releases would finally be cut off in 2010 with the release of Gran Turismo 5, Polyphony's flagship racing title for the PlayStation 3. Despite its mixed reception at the time, it still proved to be a massive success, making Gran Turismo 5 the second best-selling game on the PlayStation 3 just behind GTA 5. An interesting parallel to the previous console generation. The ball was now in turn 10's court to follow up with their answer to Polyphony's new racing game. They knew their next game would only be released after Gran Turismo 5, and as such had a lot to prove. They had to convince the racing game audience it was worthwhile to stick with Xbox instead of switching over to PlayStation. So with all that pressure in mind, Ben 10 finally released Forza Motorsport 4 in 2011, marking the final Forza Motorsport game to be released on the Xbox 360. It was received extremely favorably by critics and fans alike, some even calling it the best racing game the 360 has to offer. But is that really true? Is Forza Motorsport 4 really the magnum opus it was striving to be? And does it still hold up today, roughly 12 years later? And we're getting old. That's what I wanted to find out. So let's take a dive into Xbox's most beloved racing game. All right, here we are, Motorsport 4. Man, this already looks really, really high quality. I love it when racing games have strong openings like this. It just gets you excited. But it's already crazy, like looking at just at the videos here, how much the series has improved graphically. If you think back to Forza Motorsport 2, if you watched my video on that, that looked way different. Like, graphically, they made such a huge jump from Motorsport 2 to 3, and then probably another huge one from 3 to 4. Like, this already looks like a game that could be on an Xbox One. We are an endangered species, you and Ooh. me. Ooh. <laughs> I know that voice. We're told to think of economy and the environment, not excitement and enjoyment. Man, what he's talking about rings more true now than ever before. That speech aged very well. <laughs> that's a nice intro. Yeah, that's why I love racing games. They just encapsulate motorsport culture. I hope racing games will always, always have a place somewhere where we can just experience cars and experience locations and just have fun driving. <laughs> Throwing us right into the cockpit. No hut, no nothing. Yeah, this looks damn good, man. And it feels good, too. Let's see, I don't think this is true 1080p. I can't say I mind. This looks good enough. But I think the Xbox 360 era was just the point in gaming where games just started to age much better. Like, if you go back and actually play something on the original PlayStation 2, it looks much worse. Not just the games themselves, but just the resolutions and frame rates. But I feel like everything on the 360 you can still pick up and play nowadays without any issues. The frame rate is also so smooth. Like, that was just straight up flat 60 FPS. Oh! Interesting. We have detected a Forza 3 saved game. By importing your profile, you will receive cars and in-game credits. Ah, it gets you fixed rewards based on the level. Okay, so it does not port my content over. Okay. Yeah, then fine. I, I, a bit of a head start I'm fine with. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's do it. Why not? Aha, Force of Faithful. Hey, it even gave me an achievement. Nice. What do we have? A Vauxhall Aguila. I've never seen that thing before. Volkswagen Vox. Fox. You know, although that car is German, it's actually fairly rare here. I gotta say that one actually looks kind of nice. It looks more like um, a downsized Fiesta. Like, if you know the first gen... Uh, of Ford cars, they look terrible, man. My mom had one of those. The Citroen C1, Nissan Micra, and a Chevrolet Spark. It's probably very common in America. Uh, I'm thinking maybe Volkswagen Fox or Ford car. Kind of leaning towards the Fox, though. I really like that they <laughs> start you off in, like, just an economy shitbox. Like, <laughs> this is actually the bottom of the barrel right here. I really like that. Racing games in general nowadays became so insecure and self-conscious about putting you into slow cars. Nowadays, especially the Forza, Forza franchise, always wants to just get you into fast cars immediately. It's not necessarily a looker, but that's exactly the point. By trying to get good-looking fast cars right away, I think you're missing the point. Hey. <laughs> It's the Forza version of the Sunday Cup. <laughs> okay, so I suppose we're already choosing a race. Gives us a 50% 50 credit bonus. We actually did not get any credits uh, from importing the Forza 3 save file. So that's unfortunate. Gives us 3,000 credits. I wonder if the 50% is going to be better than the 3,000. Actually, it's not going to be. 
The payout for this event is 3,000 credits regardless. 50% of 3,000 is 4,500. So let's not do that. This is definitely better to do here. That way we actually double the money. Or we do this here. But for this we need a B car. Oh, we probably have a B car. Now let's just do this here. The world tour gives an extra 25% bonus to your payout. Oh, okay. So I can do the world tour where I think the game just kind of like hands you a bunch of events and then you can choose what to do next. Or you can just go to the classical event grid, but then you won't get a, a money bonus. Okay. Nice pass. I just got an achievement for a pass. That's, that's great. Perfect turn. Thanks for all the achievements, game. I'm just driving. <laughs> oh, you did a pass! Oh, you did a turn! Here's some gamer score. But yeah, handling wise, this feels fantastic. Definitely a little bit better than um, Motorsport 3, I must admit. In Motorsport 3, handling was a little bit too slidey. I feel like you should have had a bit more grip. I mean, fair enough, I'm currently in a front wheel drive economy oh. shitbox. Probably a bit early to judge the handling, uh, but it feels really nice to get an achievement for ramming since this is Forza. <laughs> I'm a Volkswagen fan, hell yeah. And we're going to America. Dangerously close to Florida. I think so far I'm a bit weirded out by the lack of a difficulty setting. But I guess the game just adjusts that automatically. I usually don't trust games that do that though. Recognition of excellent performance has been awarded your choice of several cars. Aha! Uh -huh. See, that I like more than Motorsport 3 already, because Motorsport 3 just gave you a whole bunch of, like, cars in your face. Now I can at least choose. I think that's a bit more interesting. The, <laughs> the Saiyan XD. Ha! Why would you call a car XD? What well, Fiesta is actually quite nice. And a Yaris. No, not this time. Suzuki. I mean, we can look at it, right? That's a car I've never seen anywhere before. Doesn't happen that often that I see something completely new. I still don't get why a car was actually just called XD. Well, what does that even mean? That's one thing I gotta hand to the Americans, man. American cars are very easy to remember if we're talking names. What does the car actually look like from the inside? I haven't checked. Yeah, that is basic. But the world tour, it seems like it's more of a guided career mode, right? So I think the way it works, it just kind of forces you on certain tracks, but then you can just sort of decide on a bonus. At least that's how I understand it at the moment. I think I might just switch to the event list so that we can actually choose stuff ourselves, build cars for it, and because I do like that flexibility. It means we do miss out on the 25% credits bonus, but I think we'll survive. Mm hmm. I wonder what these badges and titles do. Might just be related to online, honestly. Correct! You actually get a penalty for damage. Interesting. So you technically have to repair your cars. I think that's something that um, Motorsport 2 had that I really liked. Alright, uh, so what do we got? Oldema 2, Miata, or 240SX. Oh, that's a tough one. I think I should go with the MR2 because it has different specs. <laughs> hey, Nico, let's go bowling. <laughs> Target 100,042 points. Oh, I just got a knockover pins? Ah, dude, I remember this from Forza Motorsport 7. Yeah. 7 had a few events like that. This is actually really nice. I really like these fun game modes. I feel like that was something that Motorsport 3 was kind of missing. You gotta do it like a bowling ball. Just kind of approach from the side. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, it's probably best to do like some kind of drift here. Speed up? What do you mean? I got no points from that. Cue the Wii Sports theme. Da -da 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 -da. All right, we hit the target already. I wonder how hard these are gonna get laid on. It's really hard to knock over all of them, though. I don't think I don't think that's really possible. <laughs> hey, yeah, use a hammer for this. 100% a good idea. Just anything that's huge. Compete through a full day of intense racing as you face opponents in two championship race heats. I think I'm still gonna stick with the fox, honestly. Let's just do like a full season with the fox. Random credits bonus. Yeah, let's do it. Then that way I can maybe get an idea <laughs> if random is good or not. Oh, the track map. That's what you guys were saying among us. <laughs> 1,500? I mean, I guess I'm not complaining. That's like extra 50%. Man, you can get scanned really hard with that random bonus though, but I like it. It's, it's kind of fun. I like random elements in racing games. Makes it more fun every time. What's gonna, what's the credit bonus going to be? 500? Oh, God. At least Volkswagen is paying us. 2002 Turbo. That's actually really nice. Julia? Uh, not really my style. 2000 GTR though. Ah, oh, man. <sighs> Ah, oh, man. I just can't say no. But I do want to exit it and actually check out the event list. Holy moly. <laughs> okay. So let's start with a Fiat Punto. <laughs> I should have I should have gotten the Punto after all, huh? Sell auction gift. Man, back when you could just sell cars. <laughs> and then have to use the auction house for everything. Cars change home space. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can change it to the Top Gear Studio. Oh, that is cool. Wait, is it like modeled or is it just images? How is that going to work? Oh, that is so cool. I think they modeled the um, ground, like the floor. And the rest outside is just images. All right, let's, let's actually get back into the career. 
This game is so fun, man. I am having so much fun. So, body family must be city car and country must be Japan. Okay. 14,000 credits. That's not that, that's not that much. I can, I can afford that. So, we're just building the next rice rocket here. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> dude, it only weighs 855 kilos. It's almost as light as a Lotus, dude. Oh, this is actually more events. It's actually fun. I have to, I have to carry this rice rocket around for five races. But one thing that I like about this game so far, over Motorsport 3, is it doesn't completely shower you with money. Motorsport 3 absolutely drowned you in money. Like, with every level up, you got so much cash and cars all the time. I, I don't feel that strongly here. I think if you just play the World Tour, you do get a lot of cars. But you can basically play this just like Motorsport 2, where you just look at the event list, do what you want to do, buy cars for the events, build them up, and then race and turn a profit. Just the way I like it. But I wonder if that's gonna... If, if this game is gonna basically replace Motorsport 2 as my favorite Forza Motorsport game. Yeah, honestly... Uh, oh. Oh, okay, the slowdown is uh, really bad if you go off the road. Okay, this is not Gran Turismo. You can't just cut everywhere. Ooh, you have to pick classic muscle car. Thunderbird? Oh, come on. I think I'll go with a Thunderbird. That's a car from the 50s and 60s, dude. This is something you would see in a Fallout game. The handling in this game is fantastic. I mean, I'm still, I still have only played with uh, low-end front-wheel drivers, so it's still hard to tell, but it feels great. Doesn't look like you get any prize cars for completing these here. You only get prize cars from leveling up. Hey, Maple Valley, dude, we haven't been here yet. <laughs> How? It's just a race with these four cars, man. I gotta say, I think I have the coolest color. I like this one. It just looks like a downscaled Fiesta. Which is exactly what the car looks like from the outside, so I guess it makes sense. No, the current trend is just upscaling cars to SUV size. I wanna see the opposite. Actually, that's pretty sweet from the back. It's kinda weird here. What is what is that in the middle there? Of the spoiler lip. Is that it's is that it's asshole? I did I did pick a cougar, yeah. That does make me a cougar enjoyer. What the hell is Sedona? Oh yeah, dude, I remember this from um, Forza Motorsport 3. Oh, it was one of the new ones in that game. Yes, 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 yes. You can actually drive through the stadium. And this music is way too hardcore for these cars. And if the music isn't blasting your ears off... Within the first sec- Ah! Within the first second, it's not going hard enough. Yeah, the grass is kind of sticky here. If you go too far away from the track, the ground becomes kind of sticky. Like... It's, it's kind of the game's way to prevent uh, corner cutting. The, honestly, the best way to prevent corner cutting is just adding penalties. But not the way Grid 2 did it, for example, where it slows you down, but it just adds time. I think that's, that's probably the best way to handle it. Alright, another car. Let's check it out. Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> right, it's not really much of a choice. <laughs> Ooh, Datsun is quite nice. What in God's name is that? The Nissan Leaf. Holy, you're ugly. What is this? Oh, why is the Nissan logo blue? You see that? Is that a graphical error? Probably because it's electric, right? Yeah, zero emission. The Suzuki Liana. It's basically as basic as it gets. It looks like, you know what this car looks like? It looks like one of the generic cars in a GTA game. <laughs> Dude, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with the Golf. Let's go. Let's build like a funky Golf. Pretty sure it has some good uh, customization too. Oh yeah, it does actually have some customization. Oh yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. I have a bit of a lip there. So not much, but I'll take it. So the car still needs to be... In oh, you can make it all wheel drive? It actually loses. It actually loses performance from that. It gains 200 kilos. You, don't, you can't see, it, but it gets it gains 200 kilos. Actually, over a ton. The re. <laughs> okay, let's not make these like 18 inches though. So this is a multi-class race. I don't think I can see who's where though. But I'm pretty sure that I don't necessarily need to beat these Mustangs and whatnot in front of me. No biggie. Look at the exhaust, dude. It's just a stick. My favorite Motorstorm game, I think so far it's still Motorsport 2. But let me play a little bit more of this. And maybe I'll change my opinion. Approximately 10 hours later. But this was like one of the really cool things they added with Forza Motorsport 4. Where you could actually like walk around the car and everything looks super realistic. Like the reflections and the detail is a super high quality and you can sit in the car. Like that was just really, really cool stuff. Yeah, it happens very rarely that um Ferrari still makes 
modern classics. I feel like their cars are very hit and miss. I feel like with this one, they really built a classic. Like, this is a car that I think most people just really like. I gotta say, this is something that I really miss from modern Forza games. Like, this, this entire Forza Vista mode, right? Where you can just kind of walk around the car, sit inside and everything. Like, that has just carried over in every continuous Forza game. But I feel like what made this mode special wasn't the fact that you could walk around the car. It was the fact that... It was interactive. Like, you could walk around the car and, you know, get some details, some specs, have clocks and talk some shit about the car. I feel like that's what made this mode so special. Not necessarily the fact that you can walk around with it, although that is admittedly cool. And I really wish that in modern Forza games, they would kind of bring back that interactivity. So what is the challenge even? Okay, I guess just a regular race or a time trial. Yes, this is running on Windows 98, 100%. I think this was also the car that we drove in the intro race, right? I mean, it makes sense. It's the cover car. I was like the main car they wanted you to... Whoa, what's that Lambo driver doing? What am I doing? <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson himself, talking about these cars, added a lot of character and kind of made this mode what it was. But I still wouldn't mind if it's just some random character talking about these cars. This is the Ferrari 458. The Ferrari of all time. Motorsport 8 with some sort of Grand Tour crossover would be amazing, dude. So, we can now explore the car in Auto Vista, but that doesn't mean we own it, right? I will have to unlock the rest, though. And there's quite a few of them, actually. Look at that. Let's do a couple more. Let's check out the Ford GT next. I'm surprised Clarkson fits in this, man. Like, do you know how tall Clarkson is? They probably had to special, specially make one for him. LFA is next. Let's check it out. I feel like every car that came after this from Lexus takes some design cues from this one. But still one of the best sounding cars of all time. Alright, let's go back to the career. In fact, actually, let's do another Division of the World Tour. The Clubman Division. Class E European Tour? Class D? Would be a little bit more fun. Or the Mugen Showcase. Yeah, true. It's one of the cars I actually got when I played off screen. So there's just a bunch of Mugen cars, huh? Oh yeah, definitely. So, like, how is this an Xbox 360 game? So it looks way too good. I could easily fool someone into thinking this came out during the Xbox One generation. There was a huge graphical jump between the start of the seventh console generation and the end of it all you have to do is just look at the forza motorsport series itself you know and honestly this does not feel dated whatsoever and this is an 11 year old game at this point nothing about this feels dated I i'd even argue forza motorsport 7 feels more dated than this like, i actually think the graphics here are a little bit better obviously you don't have all the uh, modern stuff like 4k etc right but i think the colors and everything look much much better here like motorsport 7 looked really really dull and just prefer the way the game just kind of plays out and how you have all these extra modes like the world tour and the auto vista mode makes this feel just better dude look at the damage <laughs> okay the damage mode on the lease seems much better than all the other cars oh the car is steering to one side it's actually damaged the lease is really bad i'm losing big time against these freaking mustangs here <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Did I have to I have to really keep them in check? Ah, for us in second man. I really should have picked the car with more top speeds. <laughs> Alright, come on, second at least. Come on. Oh, where's that challenger coming from, man? Yes, let's go. <laughs> Alright, wow. We lost 2000 credits due to damage. Yeah, I like that you have to pay for damages. It just incentivizes you to drive a little bit more cleanly, although I mostly forget about it. At this point, I'm several hours in the game. And I'm still seeing new tracks, like I have not been here before. Nice bumper cars. My main complaint with Motorsport 2 was just that it didn't really have that many tracks. It made things fairly repetitive fairly quickly. So this game is definitely the closest the Motorsport series got to beating the Gran Turismo series. Aren't really that similar. If you actually played both of them, you'll notice there are a lot of differences. And you can definitely enjoy both on their own merit. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I think it stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with something like GT4. What are we going for? I kind of want to go with the GTO. Like, the rest is kind of um, box standard, if I'm being honest. What's the good color for this thing? Red, maybe. Let's go with red. I really like this, man. Driving down uh, Fujimi Kaido with the traffic and cockpit view. And this is the kind of fun you cannot have in any other Forza Motorsport game. This is really what makes this game so special. Uh, so what should I do then? Toyota Yaris. <laughs> Yaris race. Uh, I, have to, I have to do it at some point, otherwise you guys are gonna murder me. Okay, you know what? It doesn't matter what color I make it. 
I'm gonna change it, obviously. 15 minutes later. I'm a painter, yeah. I'm the best painter the world has ever seen. Look at this thing. That's a car for the thumbnail, man. Look at all these normies here. And then look at me. Man, every single racing game that has a Yaris, it is the law to paint it pink and drive it. Also, where's the exhaust? You see that? But I really don't think there is one. Oh my god, there is one! <laughs> there it is! That tiny... <laughs> such a huge hole for such a tiny exhaust. It's not even centered. Look at this. <laughs> that makes the car even better, man. That actually makes it even better. I had to drive it once. Now that I have, I will never ever do it again. I already have a Camaro. I remember this one I actually got from the um, loyalty bon bonus because we did play Motorsport 3 before, so I don't actually need another one. Uh, yeah, I guess give me the Shelby GT500. I'd say let's do, let's do the fun stuff here. Like these special events. We could do another Top Gear challenge. It's just gonna put me in there with the Yaris again, isn't it? Oh, God. No! <laughs> so what's our target? 425,000. Okay, not bad. Yes! Okay, it fell over. <laughs> I was like, bruh, there's actually just one left. Can I say the engine audio was on point? People love Na NASCAR because they enjoy driving left. Or they enjoy car crashes. <laughs> I guess the sense of speed in the game is pretty good. Something I don't think I mentioned yet. I mean, we're own only doing 200 here. And it feels pretty fast, honestly. Flat out? Is this a flat out reference? Gate pass. Yeah, good thing I have the best handling car in the entire game right now. This car is perfect for this challenge. Yep. As grip just isn't there, man. <laughs> I have to be really careful with the throttle and steering. Uh, yeah, okay. I am rerunning that one. Yeah, I should drift through it. It's fine. <laughs> Where that counted has passed? <laughs> Alright, fine, I'll take it. I think it's rock mode to find. Nah, this is definitely way more controllable. <laughs> These challenges here are made for front wheel drive cars. Do it! Mm, dude, almost a flawless run. Now, 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 now I want a flawless run. I think the timing here is very, very lenient. You can definitely hit a bunch of gates and you'll be fine. Reading chat with this autocross mod is tricky, man. Hmm. Nah, not a huge fan of the ISF. The S4 is quite nice. So as you see here, it's 63. This one I find pretty interesting. Okay, this looks the rear looks really weird. Actually, it looks kind of nice. Just the weird taillights. Track day Chevrolet A. Alright, let's see what we can do. An A-class Chevrolet. We should have a decent amount of money at this point, so... I think Cobalt is more fun. Let's get the Cobalt. Push it to A-class. That shouldn't be impossible. <laughs> I actually have some tuning parts. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Man, they all look terrible. This looks that that one looks like something out of out of a Need for Speed game, straight up. Dude, is that all this weird ass street wing here? The Forza wing looks terrible. It's super super tiny. Yeah, probably better than the other options here though. Actually, look at that. It looks like it changes the lights, but it might just be uh, the reflection. Honestly, it doesn't even look that bad. Oh, the understeer boy. I have to pass 67 cars over two laps. Okay, this should have been the most wanted DS model. Agreed. <laughs> But interesting, I thought we would be going up against Corvettes. I thought this was like an extra race. Ooh. <laughs> Imagine caught smoke. I actually took it all oh, while. Wow. Yeah, the damage is bad. Oh boy. Ah, okay. This I have to rewind. This cobalt is useless. <laughs> Get him. Wow, yeah. Now the car looks fucked up. Mm. The value is so off here, though. Like. How do you put a 370Z in the same category as an S5? You know what? Fuck it. Ah! But the car is... Not that good. And I don't think the upgrade they put on this car is good. It's probably just a bunch of engine upgrades and nothing for handling. Like, with a different configuration, I'm pretty sure you could make this car a lot more usable. Like, I'm curious. What, what car was that? I could never make that out. Ferrari F for ya! Okay! Uh, no wonder, man. <laughs> The front looks even worse. Yeah, it definitely looks like a car you can still set to uh, barely used on eBay. E63. Okay. This one's definitely more on the luxurious side. Uh, this looks like a mafia car in black. I like it. <laughs> yes, I was never a huge fan of this SLS AMG myself. But I do like the um, successor of this one. Like the generation after this one. The newer one. Yeah, I think this car really like managed to be both luxurious and very, very sporty. Like supercar. 
I think that's what the car really excels at. Forza Vista in VR would be sick. That, that I feel like is definitely a missed opportunity. Yeah, I don't know, Microsoft in general is just super hands-off when it comes to VR. Like, they have not done anything in that regard. Ah, okay, to unlock this car, I must complete the challenge first. Yeah, I was wondering what the point of these challenges was. <laughs> I gotta say, 177, but doesn't really wow me too much. But I can definitely appreciate Aston doing something different with this car, because my main complaint with Aston Martin is always that everything, like, all of their cars are way too fucking similar. Like, seriously, tell me the difference between, like, a DB9, DB11, Vantage, Vanquish, whatever the fuck they produce. So this car at least stands out, and that I, that I can appreciate. Alright, Clarkson, hit me up. Compared to Vantage and Vanquish, it is a rubbish name. And frankly, the car <laughs> deserves better. Oh. <laughs> What's the, that was the horn? Yeah, I admit, I never actually watched a Bond movie. Either I'm too young for James Bond or not British enough. <laughs> Probably both. That's crazy. The model work on these cars is pristine. Especially in the interior. Especially considering this is running on a 2005 console. The Vera, no oh boy. <laughs> oh, the target's a bit higher than before. <laughs> Did you see how the bath took off? Yeah, look at this. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? That's a fun track for the car, though. <laughs> it's not really much of a race. <laughs> Can't drive. That's the point. I want to fuck around. It's the entire point of this mode. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I mean, we did get cars that definitely beat the Varen in a bunch of ways. But the magical thing about this car is like this. You can drive comfortably in this thing right that's the that's the the quirk with this car like it's absolutely absurd in terms of performance but you can't just drive it like it's it's a comfortable luxurious car at the end of the day so whereas all the other cars that you know beat this thing or are or almost beat this thing are so tuned uh to just delivering performance that they're basically undrivable outside of a racetrack i will say one cool thing about the car is that it had a lot of interesting colors it came in a lot of different color combinations and those are actually only a few of them that is one positive i like when cars are a little bit more experimental and interesting with their colors instead of just being like black silver white and then maybe red if they're feeling funky bugatti recommends changing the veyron specially formulated tires every 2500 miles four new tires carry a price tag of $38,216. <laughs> I mean, uh, the thing is that when you can afford such a car, that doesn't really matter anymore, right? Of 253 miles per wow, those pedals, what the f... Those pedals look weird. I've never seen the pedals on this car. Ridiculous car by every stretch of the imagination, though. Like, uh, love it or hate it, but that thing is, is absurd. And man, it just takes no time to get back into the handling of the game. They really nailed it with this one. That one I want off screen. This is a really weird car. Probably drives like dog shit, but it's like a modern car that tries to still go for that super old school look, that 50s look, you know? I don't know, not a fan. Yeah, that car drives as well as expected. Oh boy. I want my Kuhn touch back, man. <laughs> Fuck. You can tell the car just has more horsepower than it knows what to do with. Oh, I'm not driving this car again, man. It's terrible. I can hardly steer without going into this light. We really have to concentrate with this thing. But if you can keep it under control, it seems to be much faster. You have hundreds of hours in this, yeah. I understand it because there's so much content. And obviously I'm not even engaging with all the online stuff, which I heard was top tier back then. Ooh, wow, okay, that was close. Mm, okay, I wasn't sure. Oof. Cutting it way too close with these. But I still smashed the time by a whole minute, nice. Yeah, it's kind of weird how Horizon doesn't seem to have all of, the, all of these fun modes. I think the cars slip and slide a bit too much, and I think that has always been a Forza problem, if I'm being honest. The cars aren't as grippy as they should be in certain situations, in my opinion. Like in uh, Gran Turismo, for example, the cars grip a lot better. Like, you see me sliding around a lot less in those games. Like, see here, like this. I don't think that should have happened here. There's nothing that breaks the game and you can deal with it. And to a certain extent, it's kind of nice to control these cars and their slip and slide. It's just a quirk of the handling. You can sometimes still have, like, wheel spin at 200, miles co uh, 200 kilometers power. It's not really how it works. I suppose they just wanted to make the um, handling a bit more action-like, if you will. I'm not sure if there's any... Yeah, like this thing. <laughs> I really want to drive this one, though. Not right now, but eventually. I kind of want to go with this one instead. Was that purple? Okay, I'm going with purple. <laughs> nice, okay. This thing is really tail happy. 
And I gave it sports tires. Maybe I should have given it race tires after all. I remember specifically this car here. Actually, used to be the best drift car in Horizon 3. Mainly because this thing had more turning angle than the other cars. For no reason. The <laughs> Fair Lady Club. Surely there's a 350Z here. Bot. <laughs> actually, has some parts. Sheesh. I, I hate this Nismo kit here. I actually carbonize that. Doesn't look that good though. Ah, but when will I get the chance to carbonize another hood again? This thing looks good, dude. That is a good looking car. I think we should give it some custom colors though. We could try to re kind of recreate Rachel's car. <laughs> Why not give that a try? And then I think, what, what color were those? Weren't those like yellow or golden? I would say it's close enough when it comes to the bumpers, if you ask me. Let's see if we have something that's similar, where I don't have to like fuck around with the vinyl editor for 12 hours. Maybe, maybe this might be good enough. <laughs> so scuffed, dude. Yeah, there's no dragon here, man. We have to settle for a different animal. There, I'll, I'll add a hyena or whatever the hell this is. Oh boy. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, okay. How do I? How do I? Um, I guess I can cut it and then insert. Magnificent. Just like I remember this. It still looks better than the. God damn, poor excuse they had in the run and most of all 2012. I mean, I should be playing the music from the DS game instead, considering we're in a bootleg version of that car. I don't know why there isn't as much love for the 370Z. If you were to ask me, I think the 370Z tried a bit too hard to look futuristic. And what I like about the 350Z is it just looks so damn clean, which is why you can do so many cool modifications to it. It's like a blank canvas, right? Also, the interior of this thing always looks like... My favorite and honestly one of the most iconic interiors, if you'd ask me. Now, I don't usually remember what an interior of a car looks like. Like, you can show me a random interior of a car. Honestly, 9 out of 10 times, I won't be able to tell you... Uh, like, I won't be able to tell you what car it is. But not with this one. I think GBA and DS soundtrack might just be the same, but compression differences. <laughs> there we go. That's better. I'm gonna return Rachel's car to her. I don't think she wants it anymore. <laughs> Bruh! I just started the race! God damn it. Lovely. Is she just gonna continue like that? I'm down for more car reviews. It's since made cameo appearances in The Simpsons and The Wedding Singer, among many others. Which is funny because the car is actually complete dog shit. <laughs> like all of this brushed aluminum actually makes this thing so damn heavy and the engine is not good. This helps the car reach 0 to 60 miles per hour in 10.5 seconds and achieve a top speed of 120 miles per hour. Not even 10 second car. L. Dominic Toretto is not impressed. But I will say it looks nice. Its state-of-the-art cassette deck is even capable of receiving AM and FM radio at the push of a button. Whoa, that's radio. <laughs> its name comes from the red paint the engine builders daubed all over its cylinder head because, well, that's the only color paint they have at Ferrari. Testarossa <laughs> means red head. 50 million! Oh, hoo -hoo! 15 million dollars and now and that was in 2011 i don't want to know the price of this thing nowadays oh. right, i'm muting it. muting it i'm muting it clarkson's not gonna talk about this right clarkson doesn't play video games 2554 m12 force application vehicle warthog ah with the fitting music too okay okay i gotta say i'm not a not a huge halo fan <laughs> model year in 2000 in a little bit over 500 years and i think the currency there was even dollars was credits <laughs> yeah where's where's that gun in horizon 5 for the rammers <laughs> children who spend too much time on their xboxes often write to us at top gear and ask why we have yet to test this the m12 fav warthog Endless variants, a bit like the Porsche 911 then, but unlike the Porsche 911, this is only available to members of something called the UNSC. And I don't think they do an RS version. Unlike <laughs> the Porsche, which is vulnerable to disappearing off the road backwards, the Warthog is only vulnerable to Banshee's fuel rod guns and light plasma cannons. So, don't say you haven't been warned. 
Why didn't they why didn't they include that? I think that was so much more fun. Okay, I think I'm ready to leave it here, guys, though. So, was Forza Motorsport 4 everything it was hyped up to be? Honestly, definitely. The fact this game, with its plethora of content, amazing graphics, and believable physics model runs on an Xbox 360, a console released in 2005 where games still looked like this, feels almost like witchcraft. But is it better than Gran Turismo 5? Well, that really comes down to what type of game you enjoy more. I actually think these two games play very differently, and one could certainly make the argument that FM4 looks and runs better. However, having played GT5 at around the same time as well, which you can check out right here by the way, I found myself preferring the handling model, soundtrack and progression of that game. At the end of the day, it's 2023, and the entry level to both of these games is now lower than ever before. Both the 360 and the PS3 can be found reasonably cheap if looking in the right places, just like the games themselves. I mean, I paid 6 bucks for this game. And even then, both games can be played somewhat decently on their respective emulators. So in my eyes, there isn't much standing in the way anymore of simply playing both of them. And I'm pretty sure you'll have a much better time with each of these games than with their modern counterparts. What's that? Forza 7 got delisted? And GT7 requires an online connection and has microtransactions, despite being 70 bucks on a 500 bucks console that you will probably not buy at MSRP. Well, back to the classics it is once again then. Thank you for watching, especially to my numerous YouTube and Patreon members, in particular Sydney Shujini, Enrico Brose, Johannes Meles, Tommy, and 0567, as well as Jake MG for editing this video. So, there we move on to Forza Motorsport 5 next, the most hated one in the series. I hope to see you all then. Take care.